Hello, everybody. Good day to you all. Today I'm talking about Gen V, season number one, episode number six, Jumanji. And in this episode, it was directed by Rachel um, Goldberg. In this episode here, we're getting in the side of the mind of Kate. Kate has pretty much told everybody what she did. She pretty much erased, erased everybody's memories. And a lot of people aren't mad at her, especially Andre. He, it's like he took it the hardest out of all of them, which is really messed up because he also did some dirty stuff as well, too. Matter of fact, we get into the mind of all the crew, and we also get... And so and also we also get a, 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 a member that, that that that's not you know, that, that becomes a, a part of the the, the, the troop without even want to be part of the troop. But we, we all know he's just a red shirt, which is kind of sad for him. Really sad. Yeah. But in this episode here, we pretty much get inside the mind of Kate. You know, she pretty much told us her backstory. But now we got to see what happened, how her mom treated her as well too, and also how um, Indira and and Dari had got his. Um, got her clutches on her in the first place. How she got to manipulate her and to get into what she wanted to do. And it's so weird on this show that the people who have the, the least power have the most power on this show. Not they, they don't have no, they don't have no superpowers. They don't have no abilities as well too. But they but they but, but they can control and manipulate these soups to get in and do what they want. And and, and it was, it's so it's so it's so interesting to me. It's so interesting to me because you have Kate, a person who can persuade anybody to do anything that she wants to do. But yet she be manipulated and control, and somebody, and the person not even doing anything to her. She can stop it anytime she wants to. She doesn't feel comfortable. She, she doesn't feel comfortable. She's comfortable doing it. She doesn't like. She doesn't like doing, doing it as well too. She she hates what how, it's, how it's, what it's doing to people that she loves. But yet she's still doing it anyway because this person gave her a little bit of kindness. And that's pretty much you're seeing out of here. Is just, like certain people, just, just a little bit of kindness, and you can get them to do anything you want. I look at their faults and insecurities, things they're scared of, things that they're worried about, and then just prey on that and then do the opposite, make them feel good, make them feel safe, make them feel like this, they can depend on you, and then that's, you know, bing, bang, boom. They're, 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 they're mind writing people. I mean, she, she, she because you got them. Um, and Dara, she tried, she, she looked like she got Kate under her belt. She tried that with Marie and it didn't work. But at the same time, she still doesn't have plans for her. And now Marie's powers are starting to evolve a little bit more as well, too. She's starting to change them more. It would help people, bring people back, to stop some people from dying as, as well. Finding the thing inside of her. I, I, I can't wait to get, to get to the point where she actually starts bloodbending and controlling people, make them do the things they want. And it was just so interesting because you got Sam, who has this amazing power. He people like the credible hawk of this of this of this of this, this series so far. Both people are suffering from mental, mental uh, illness in some type of form. And both of them have like, been abused in some type of way. Both of them have parents. Well, Bruce's parents, didn't, her father didn't love him and, and try to and beat him. And, but but his, his, her, his parents get, allowed their kids to get drugged up as, as a baby, which is even more messed up. So, so both of them have, have gone through some stuff. And then you see the relationship that, uh, between Golden Boy between um, Luke and his brother, and that and how Luke wasn't as as strong, but he wasn't as strong, and he was he was in his uh, Sam's blood to put inside of Luke to make him even stronger, to make him the the, the chosen golden boy that they, they needed because Sam was too far messed up, too mentally messed up for him for him to be the one. But but Luke was perfect, so the constant manipulating in his mind and changing him like. But making him forget over and over again, I, 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 it could have led to him like losing it, going snapping, and may, maybe possibly reason why he blew himself up in the first place. So, I don't, like, who knows? Who knows? Like, could, she, could she be responsible for that? I, I don't know. Or, or, or did he think his life was over after everything, everything that happened? Uh, I don't know. So much stuff. Again, it's getting inside the backstory of everybody, like, like um, Andre, seeing that he was a jerk the whole entire time. It, it, Saying he was friends with Luke the whole time, but he actually, he actually was sleeping with his girl behind his back, which is why this is probably one of the reasons why they came together so easily afterwards. Seeing Jordan, also again, someone showed them a little bit of kindness because they didn't, they, didn't, they don't get a step, to, they don't get a step to their home. Their father doesn't doesn't seem to approve of them at all. And then you have um, the professor, Professor um, Brinker Brinkerhoff. Just accept them easily, embrace their power, help them with, with their powers as well too. Let, let, let them know that they, um things gonna work out for them. 
but at the same time, all they were doing is being nice to them so they, so they can use them. And they were so desperate for somebody to, for a father for a father figure to accept them, they just went along with it. No matter, no matter what kind of craziness it was, no matter how messed up it was as well too. So messed up. And then you have you got to get inside the mindset of Marie seeing her sister, even though that wasn't her sister. But but above all, we were seeing her fears and insecurities. How she thinks her sister is going to perceive her. How she thinks her sister is going to react to her when she sees her. And now she's she's trying to do all this situation to, to prove her sister and her sister eyes that she's not a monster. That she's not a murderer. She didn't want to kill her parents. She wanted them to be a happy family. But they just didn't work out that way. And it makes you it makes you think about a lot of things like that. What happened when Marie didn't kill her mom and dad? Would she still be on this path of, of trying to become part of the seven? Would she still want to go to the IU? Or, or, or would she be a whole different person altogether? Would she still end up here, but she just be a whole different person? Ugh. It's like through, it's through the tragedy, it made her a better person in a way, it's, it's, which kind of sucks. It really does suck. Yeah. But even though the thing was a little trippy and the thing was really messed up, and the acting performance in this episode was just fantastic. We also we got the comedic moment here as well too, with Jensen Ackles coming in as Soldier Boy, as, as um, Kate's imaginary friend. Also, her reason to help her come become in the womanhood. Now, even though I was enjoying the performance and I did like to see Jensen Ackles back on the show, I kept I kept, I kept thinking to myself, how did Kate know who Soldier Boy was? Wouldn't she be too young with Soldier Boy? Um, or was she was she even born with Soldier Boy? The thing. Because the seven wasn't even a thing then, so he came before the seven. So how would she even know who he is? Unless she probably saw old movies, maybe that's probably what happened. Did she see old movies of him and had a crush on those movies? Maybe I don't know. Either who, it was fun seeing him on the show. It was it was, it was great seeing him with, doing a little. He, he did he know he didn't say a lot, but it was still fun fun to see him. As well, let me let me get more idea of just who this dean is and who and what she and what she what her, what her plans are, and how, and how the, what the doctor was doing in the first place to to all the to, um, to, to these to these soup kids, testing on them, manipulating them, coming up with a virus to pretty much suppress their powers to stop them, just kids to get out of line to make them a little sick. But now you have you had the Miss Evil over here. She wants to make it make the the disease into a weapon. And then use it to hurt soups and uh, and maybe possibly kill a bunch of soups. Now, why she has this hatred towards soups, I don't know. What's her backstory? What happened in her life that made her go go down this path in the first place? Because she chose a job where she's dealing with soups all the time. So is it like something that something happened in her past, and she said, "This is how I'm gonna get back at them." Put herself in a position where she's around them, and then when she she's somebody she can she can use them, manipulate them, and then also kill them if she needs to. And I just, that's really messed up. Really, really messed up. But great episode. Very well acted. Community moments in here as well, too. Also, nice budding love story going on here with um with, with um Sam and Emma, which is also very nice and very sweet and touching at the same time. A little messed up, a little weird, especially with the whole puppet situation. But other than that, it's still sweet because they fill each other. They fill, they fill, they fill in gaps. With all the all the issues that Emma has, especially with using her powers and abilities as well too, her her, her like a little bit of self loathing as well, wanting somebody to accept her for who she is without having to force herself to do something she doesn't like. Her relationship she has with her mom is so is so messed up, and she got Sam here who sees her as somebody who's beautiful who doesn't need to change at all, and, and she's, she's, even though she's no that he's all messed up in the head, she sees how beautiful he is as a person as well too, and they connect, which is nice. So overall, great episode. Looking forward to see where this where, where this goes from here. I, I don't know how this is going to go down, but I'm looking forward to see it. I really do enjoy these characters. I was also happy that the show got picked up for, for the second season, so things are looking up. Looking forward to see where that where that goes. It's so it's so weird that sometimes I I think I mostly enjoy I think I enjoy the TV show more so than the combo, which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird. The combo is really crazy. That's really nuts, but I actually enjoyed it. And, and the show is so good. They, they come up with a spinoff from a, based off a combo. I was like, wow, that's amazing. The writing on this show is just fantastic. And the, and the acting and the, and the cast they chose to pay these characters as well, they did an amazing job. 
So another great episode. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Gen V. If you haven't watched it, check it out for yourself. Hope you watch it. You enjoy it. Hope watching it too. Give me my channel like it comes up. Shabu. And subscribe to my channel and share. I really do appreciate it. Also, links down below. Make sure to my social media. You want to follow me there. And also to my, to my story about something with shirts and socks and notes and whatnot. See some stuff, buy some stuff. I really do appreciate it. Like I always say, in my dreams of a life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, peoples.